Hello, hello there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another Planet Zoo stream here at Frontier. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I am Eltan and Cassiani, and I'm one of the community managers here, primarily working on Planet Zoo. You can catch me here every week, hanging out with you guys. Uh, I'm here every Tuesday, and for the last few weeks, we have been working on our Planelt, which is aptly named, Zoo Build, uh, a community project where we come together and slowly build a sandbox zoo um, and it gives me a chance for me to learn the game and for you guys to help teach me because after all you're the experts. Uh, this week we're going to be taking a look at some more workshop builds and doing a bit more building into the zoo but before we get on to that uh, this week I am not doing it alone so give a warm welcome to Fran. Hi Fran! Hey! I'm <laughs> excited to be back. You're back! So you were here for one of our first plan out zoo streams um are you excited to see what's happened in your absence i'm excited to see if you've managed to build a squirrel army or not uh, there's definitely some more <laughs> there's there's definitely some more um i'm going to continually add them eventually i'm hoping to see if we can create a where's waldo situation with squirrels but okay. it's not too bad so before we move on i just want to say sorry for being a few minutes late we did have a couple of technical issues but they should all be fine now however if you do notice any issues with audio etc please do let us know in chat and we will get it fixed as soon as possible and other than that let's take a look at who is here see who's visiting so of course we have heather the star themselves who we could not manage without uh, our wonderful moderator i'm seeing some familiar names um, I am seeing Leaf, I'm seeing Jay Rasek, uh, I'm seeing Eben, lots of people that have been here supporting us, I've seen Caesar joining in every week and making sure that this is a great community experience and seeing some names of our wonderful creators who are the inspiration behind what we're doing. So thank you so much for being here again, I really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, uh, I will jump on to the game the game so here we Ooh. are and it's grown a little bit since the last time you were here it really has <laughs> um but we do have just one little issue i started the zoo up today and um one of our red pandas has escaped oh no <laughs> um so when I had Jens on, one of the other members of our team, uh, he decided on our next animal project and decided on red pandas. And I tried really hard asking the community for input on where to put stuff to make sure that nothing escaped. And it seems like I've been cursed and it <laughs> happened anyway, <laughs> um, which I feel like was a little bit inevitable. Um, so yeah, those red pandas are pesky, so apparently. it's not necessarily your fault. Yeah, we're going to blame the red pandas. It's definitely yeah, yeah, got nothing sure. to do with me. <laughs> no, no, no. How could you be to blame? <laughs> definitely not. Um, so we need to deal with that, which is great because it has been a while since I've played the campaign and now I've gotten so stuck into learning to build that I have forgotten how to deal with this. <laughs> so we're going to figure it out. So first off, uh, we're going to capture the animal. That's which probably a good place to start, yeah. That's probably like the one-on-one. <laughs> 
<laughs> but then we do need to figure out how it escaped. And this is where I'm like, is the climbing structure, is their bed too close? Do we think that's it? Could potentially be. Well, how far away is the climbing structure? This far. Okay. So, <laughs> mm. Did they leap? Did they parkour? Is the P in Red Panda for parkour? It's a little known fact that it actually is. So yeah, <laughs> it's definitely that. So, oh, yeah. cause um, I, I, I loaded up the zoo build and the very first thing I saw was all of the guests running in terror. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a great omen for the start of the stream. I don't know if I'd run from a red panda. I feel like I'd run towards a red panda. This does feel like a little bit of an over-exaggeration, I'm not going to lie. I don't know why they're so why they're complaining so much. They're getting such an immersive experience. It, it does feel like a bit overkill for one red panda. Oh no. But I, I don't know, I'd consider it a bonus experience. Yeah. Uh, they're just little friends. Look at them. I'm terrified. It, like at London Zoo, you get to pay to like walk with the meerkats. This is this is a free version of walking with the pandas. This is no issue. Yeah, I'd be a lot more scared if it was like an actual panda, not a little oh, red yeah. panda. No, no, no. <laughs> but, a giant panda. Yeah, I would absolutely be gone. I'd be I, part of the stampede. But like a little baby red panda. I feel cute. like for this little friend, there should be a stampede towards it instead. Yeah, exactly. Why are we running in the wrong direction? Yeah, but nonetheless, we need to figure out how they're escaping before we get on to anything else. So, our wonderful community, who are the experts here, what are you thinking? What have I done wrong? Educate me. Teach us. Take a look at the exhibit and let me know what I need to change. What you think has caused the panda escape. And then we can progress from there. But while our community is letting us know that i can show you some stuff so the last time you were here we took a look at some workshop builds and we had only just started the zoo um and this time we've placed so much so we have our badger exhibit the starting we had to start with the badgers um one because they could be called el tannin and two because they match my hair so it was just fit. <laughs> um and since then, we've made it into this little like fairy tale area. We've made a little moss hill. Aww. Perfectly timed because there's a badger here exploring. Thank you. That's Look a rock. a little bunny as well. Thank you, Chiron, for being a good friend and demonstrating. <laughs> and then we, made, we added in some like foliage, some rock features around it. Just try to make it look a bit, it's still, quite simple but just make it pretty a good starting build i love that this is your version of simple remind me to show you some of my builds next time <laughs> Ooh, stream idea <laughs> i don't think people would enjoy that stream <laughs> <laughs> oh it's fine they were asking to show some of my old builds from when i was playing uh the career mode at one point and that would be much the same it would be like look at my box <laughs> yeah literally oh dear um but nonetheless, I put in our little found, uh, our little well build from one of our community before as a little donation box. Yes. Made this area very, very quaint. Um, we have a lot of foliage. We've got our staff accessibility area tucked in the back. We have restrooms and stuff at the start because that's important. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have this little walkway that goes through and leads to our storybook area. I do not have a tree hanging in the middle of it anymore. Sorry to disappoint. The one thing I asked you for. We don't have a tree here. Uh, I remembered to place them so as nobody is getting attacked by a tree. It was a obstacle course. I did enjoy the fact that it meant that like only toddlers could fit under it. So it would cause like a toddler traffic light. And then only toddlers get to see the red pandas. I see no issue. Perfect. Maybe that's why they're all running away. <laughs> that must be it. And then, of course, we have this wonderful build because it just fit the aesthetic well. So as we've got one little shop up here. I will never get over this build. I know. I know. Every time. The detail. 
And since then, we built our devious little red pandas. And last week, I spent some time adding some detailing to the viewing area, making it a bit more interesting, adding some, we can't see because of the lighting, but I can fix that. Adding some ivy down the back of here and making some rest areas, adding a bathroom, some flower boxes, and you know, just things to kind of pull the aesthetic all together. I'm really impressed with how you've actually like made it look so aesthetically pleasing <laughs> like Thank you. i struggle with the i struggle a little bit with the climbing aspects so it's really nice to see how you've done that yeah i i, I adjusted this climbing frame stuck a, two, a few together and tried to make it a bit customized i was going to change the bridge color because of the fact that it is flexi color and that is something you mm. can do if anybody who's watching this doesn't know that but um, then I noticed that it was the colours of the pan flag and kept it because they are red pandas. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't resist. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, so, so now that we have taken a look, I am going to look at what our chat was saying in regards to... It's seeming like people are thinking it was the trees which is likely mm. but that to check the heat map which is of course a good idea except from the fact that i always find the heat maps overwhelming do you i find heat maps overwhelming in general that's fair to be fair um uh there you go there we go so this is where i get confused climbable escape point where how do I tell? Yeah, this is like an actual thing in, like, ever since I've played this game. Ever since I've played any game, I go on heat maps and I'm just like, everything is overwhelming. <laughs> no, I know what you mean, but I think I can't see anywhere that looks like it's escapable. Yeah, I'm like, what have I done? What have I done? Hmm. Is it the tree? It must be the trees. If it's not any of the climbing like enrichments, then it has to be the trees, I think. There's people in the chat saying they might have glitched out, which could be the case, in which case I've just gotten real. It's just a curse. It was like, <laughs> they have to be mischievous. So what we could do is, since it's looking like it's fine, we can just wait for them to catch it and return it and there we go and then just hope it's chill and it doesn't happen again <laughs> <laughs> just keep a very close eye on that panda we'll just keep a close eye and then see if it happens again i'm half expecting it to just like jump onto that onto that shelter and just go for it again <laughs> just wait i'm cursed see if it happens see if they're going to be sneaky do you want to behave Honestly, given how small and cute they are and they feel like cats, it just feels... Me and Fran, if you don't know, are both cat owners. They're both yeah. very, very passionate cat owners, but it does feel very cat-like. The other day, uh, my cat is called Merlin, and I've discovered that he's found a new way to climb on top of all the kitchen cabinets. Didn't oh, know good. <laughs> didn't know we could do that. I just came into the kitchen like two mornings ago and couldn't find him and then just saw eyes on the top of my kitchen cabinet and was like, oh no, because my kitchen cabinet's also um, high enough that for him to reach that, I would need to get a ladder. Um, so I was just like, ah, he's there now, I guess. <laughs> when, uh, so I moved quite recently, I moved a couple of months ago. And when we first moved into our new house, my smallest cat, I have three, but my smallest cat, Tapioca, we couldn't find her anywhere and I had a, a real panic because we'd had like moving boxes and people in and out. I'd assume she's an indoor cat, so I'd assume she's escaped. About 40 minutes of frantic searching and we found her wedged in behind the fridge. Why the fridge? I don't know. I think it might be because obviously the back of the fridge is quite warm and maybe because it was a new house we hadn't had the heating on yet. I love that. See, this is like the other day I saw a video of someone whose cat had managed to get behind their oven that was built into the wall and they had to 
pull their entire oven out of the wall and get it. And I was watching this video the entire time, hearing the cat crying and expecting it to be like a tiny kitten. And it was this proper huge ginger <laughs> cat. And I was like, did this even happen? <laughs> I don't understand how they get into the places that they get into. And we don't understand how red pandas magically escape, but somehow they find a way. And then they're so adorable, you're not even mad at them. I know, they are particularly cute. I'm very much enjoying the fact that you're just placing squirrels <laughs> as we talk about our cats. Well, while we, were doing, squirrel placement. while we were doing cat content, I decided to continue my squirrel camping. <laughs> It is the best part of Planet Zoo. <laughs> I feel like when Planet Zoo is finally complete, you'll have to do an entire stream dedicated to finding the various squirrels. <laughs> I will forget. I'm going to have to start keeping track. I'm going to have to like come in at one point and make a document and then just keep track of them all. And I, think at the you end... should, I think you should just keep track of the number and then set yourself the challenge in the last Planet Zoo stream to find them. Potentially, we could try and like challenge the community, see if they can remember how many I've added. Ooh, ooh that's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> Eventually, we'll upload the build, see if they can find them all. Oh my gosh. It'd be a very own hidden animal game <laughs> within the animal game. But nonetheless, I think it's time we maybe look at some workshop builds, do you think? That sounds good to me. So we have a couple to look at this week. We're going to take a look at them. We're going to place a couple of them in and then we're going to do some more building. Um, but first off, we're just going to heat over here into the corner, blank area, so, so we can just take a look at them without being obstructed. So first off on the agenda, uh, watch me cycle through these so I can figure out which one is which. We have one by somebody who is in the chat because this had to obviously be included because Eben made us our very own Planet Zoo sign that is not only Planet Zoo, but is the badger, which we use as our backdrop, matches my hair, and it has bagpipes, because I'm oh Scottish. <laughs> I have never seen a more you sign. <laughs> you have no idea the euphoria I felt, because I was like, this is adorable, and then I noticed the bagpipes, and it made my day. <laughs> I didn't even notice the bagpipes until you said, and... Oh, I'm just obsessed. It's, this is me. This is me. This is my mascot. <laughs> After uh, our teaser stream, where we read out the Lumi story, uh, there was fan art done, lovely fan art, which was brilliant, of me and Tim as aardvarks, because of a joke in it that we are the aardvarks. And I'm like, I feel like I'm no longer an aardvark. It, I am, I am this friend. You are a badger with bagpipes. <laughs> I am a badge pipe. <laughs> How can we combine that? <laughs> it's just adding a D to the word. But I am in love with this. So obviously, given it is made for Planet Zoo, this has to go in at oh, least yeah. once, if not multiple times, dotted around the zoo. I think that's going to replace your squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a combination. Every single yep. one of these. Oh wait, what? Wait, that's true. Even is missing one thing on his build. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear. Perfect. Now it's a planet zoo sign. Perfect. But later, once we place it in properly. So, we have that one. Amazing to go in. And then similarly. We have another themed sign that I know you have seen. Yes, I have. Because oh. this one is by Leaf, who is also in the chat, I believe, and is a Eurasian Lynx education sign themed around the Louie story we were talking about that Fran wrote. It's even got Louie, he's got his little knapsack. My little baby Louie. <laughs> little baby. And it's, it's even got his oh. trumpet. I love this so much. It's got all of his winter theming and it is adorable. And I am absolutely in love with this. The way I gasped when I saw this on Twitter, I was like, <laughs> absolutely. Like, I, I'm going to download this and put it in every single zoo that I build from here on out. Right? 
So last week during the stream, Leaf had said that uh, after the stream, he was going to share a surprise for us as a treat and tagged me in this straight after. It made me so happy to come out of the stream and immediately see this. And so I got very excited and showed everybody and immediately tagged Fran. Because, um, of course, Fran has to see it because Fran is the one that wrote the amazing story for Lumi. And now this right now we have no place for it, but this has absolutely sealed the fate that we need to have Lumi in the zoo. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I just love it so much. So this absolutely going to be a feature, but not this week because we do not have the links yet and we need to make Lumi a habitat that is worthy of Lumi. So I need to campaign for Eurasian links in Plan Out Zoo is what I need to do. Okay, that's fine. No I way, can that, start a campaign. <laughs> I, I will be looking forward to your social media posts in the future. <laughs> <laughs> My entire feed now will just be Eurasian links for Plan Out Zoo. I'm going to make a hashtag. It's going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> I will wait with bated breath. I'm going to put notifications on for your Twitter. Everything you tweet now, I'm going to be getting notifications straight to my phone. If anyone's got a hashtag suggestion for my campaign, you <laughs> drop it in the chat. Um, moving on from our signage, because we can't only have signage. I do have a few other builds that I'm going to put forward as a suggestion for our current area, because obviously the area we're building has got this very fairy tale, wholesome little theme. And I'm thinking maybe we'll do one more animal in that area before moving on to a different kind of theming. Yeah. Um, but I was also thinking we need some more guest facilities over there and some other features beyond just some animal exhibits. So I found this adorable display <gasps> of a little pumpkin oh. house. I love it. Right? I, I love like it so much. <laughs> And I thought this would be perfect to have as a little fairy tale feature for some scenery display. This is the Little Pumpkin House by Eden Moon 3 on the Steam Workshop. I will put all of the links in the description when this gets saved on YouTube later. So if you love this and you want it, don't worry, you will have an easy way to find it. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was adorable and I thought it was perfect for a, a like fairy tale build. Yeah, I love the little bit of like fairy tale theming you've got going on. And this is like just the perfect addition. I'm literally like sitting here staring at every single aspect of it. Look at the right. little toadstools. I know. We've got the little toadstool in here. We've got some fruit. We've got the leaf detail. It even looks like it's got fairy lights down the little um, banister railing. For a minute, I was like, which word is the English word? <laughs> Sometimes I have the problem of having to try and remember what's normal English and what's Scots. I think we will forgive you for, for flipping between the two. I can't remember why in a stream the other week I nearly started speaking about kitchen counters and went to call them bunkers and then realised I think that's a really Scottish thing. Yeah, I've never heard them called bunkers. <laughs> yeah, it's the bunker. That's, it's not a counter. or Yeah, I had to remind myself because it felt very wrong. <laughs> I think we'll just start a little L dictionary of all these phrases that you use. <laughs> oh God, a very niche area of Scotland. <laughs> yeah, just specific to you, just just your vocabulary. Oh Goodbye. God, I spent too much time on the internet. That's going to end up a mess, but <laughs> we can give it a shot. Okay, um, I'll start that after my campaign for the Eurasian links. Perfect. <laughs> the plan it's set in stone but yeah what I was thinking is so of course we've got the shopkeeper build that we were on about that we love dearly and I was thinking in the same area we can have this for a little feature I've accidentally hit the favorite button but then we can also have well first we need to lower it into the ground because that was insane this is not rotated the right way. A food Ooh. court. I love this. That we can have some shops put in and have just a little feature area. And this also gives us a buffer of some greenery that we can either keep or we can delete for separating the areas if we want to then go from the fairy tale section into a different area. Yeah, the foliage is a really nice way to separate them. 
Yes, because I was thinking about the fact that if we want to go into a different theming, I want it to seem somewhat natural. I don't want it to just be really bam, bam, stilted. Yeah, I know what you mean. I really struggle sometimes to get the transition between two themed areas. So this is a really nice way to do it. Yeah, and depending on what area we do next as well, I was like, that could be really hard to do. But foliage is a very natural way to do it. And obviously, mm. if we don't want it and decide against it, it's really easy to just remove from the build. And then we can just keep the, the little shop front. But I thought that this in particular and the like minimalist wood design matched mm -hmm. our staff area quite nicely so yeah. it, it kept the theming that you might see in the backdrop together quite well which i thought was a nice touch and i That's just wanted really somewhere nice somewhere kind of small so i can have a few more shops a few more amenities for the guests without it being too much because later on I want to make maybe like a restaurant area and like a full service area but little features here and there I think is a nice way to make sure the guests have what they need. Yeah and you can never start thinking about your guests too early it's nice to have those builds in early on even if you decide to expand them later. Precisely plus there's plenty of greenery to add in more squirrels. <laughs> I saw the rabbit and I was like, no, oh, that's not a squirrel. But no, you, you came in clutch and, and decided. Yeah. No, it's, he's, he's there waiting for some friends. Some squirrely, squirrely friends. Oh, dear. It was fate. They knew exactly what I needed. <laughs> and then to go with this, the other thing I have, a bit of a builder build, is this little plaza Ooh, as another option. That. Let's actually put that in the floor, shall we, Elle? No, no, I like that it's levitating. <laughs> <laughs> My infamous bad habit. There oh, we go. Dear. So yeah, I thought this matched our nature theming and the wisteria gave it a really lovely, matching, whimsical, magical vibe. Yeah, because we've got wisteria on a couple of other bits on the build, so it's a nice way to kind of tie it all in. And I love the fairy lights. We do love fairy lights. But I always think Wisteria is a really good way to get uh, a bit of a magical, old fashioned fairy tale vibe. Um, I have a Lord of the Rings themed front door and I have a bunch of fake Wisteria hanging around it, which probably doesn't surprise anyone. <laughs> I personally am not surprised. I can't speak for everyone in the chat, but I personally am not surprised at all. <laughs> it is kind of my reputation at this point. But I thought that just uh, an area we could put some benches in here. We can stare through the ceiling because I'm great at camera work. <laughs> but yeah, we could put some benches. We could attach this so as it leads on and have it connect on to our build here. They actually go really well together. Right. It's a really nice transition from one to the other. I really like these. This is not going to be centered, but you get the gist for when it's we place okay. it. It's centered in spirit. <laughs> and this means we could have just like a really nice guest area that kind of separates and gives a block before we move into whatever we choose for our next themed exhibit section. That I will try to show my bias in less and stop just picking gorgeous fantasy builds. I mean, you won't. It's fine. We won't. That's what these, we're all here for. <laughs> these two staff members are just here now. That's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember how many people got fired the last time you showed me the community bit. <laughs> Look, sometimes I place things and I just leave the staff because it means that I won't forget to hire more staff later on. <laughs> <laughs> the flawless plan is flawless. Wait. We're going to go with, yeah, it's a plan and totally not just one of the other ways that I'm really bad at planning. <laughs> no, no, no. You meant to do it. It's fine. Go with it. That's how we pull off everything. Um, I am seeing Heather saying, great eye for blueprints, L. Thank you. I am glad you like them. I spend a lot of time going through everything that you guys share on the workshop. And part of what I want to do with Plan Out Zoo is use it as an opportunity to show off one of the ones that I think are brilliant and that really caught my eye. Um, so as with 
Eben's Plan Elzu sign. If you do make anything specifically for Plan Elzu, please do upload it and tag it Plan El or send us it on uh, social media or something similar so as I can find it and I will do my best to keep an eye out for any builds themed around the community and themed around what we do and try and include them and show them off because we love it when you guys have fun with the things that we're doing for you all. And if anybody wants to create some Lumi themed decorations to pressure L into adding Eurasian links into the into Planet Zoo, then please go ahead and make sure you tag both of us on Twitter because I will greatly enjoy it. Especially if they create like themed habitat features so I can build a habitat out of mini environmental objects that are all Lumi themed. I would love that. Yes, that's exactly what I would like. That would be like the accumulation of the entire community and it would make me very happy. I'm on board. If you could get this to happen, then Lumi's coming to Plan Elzu. Look, if all else fails, I'll build them myself. Ooh. Oh dear, why have I committed to that now? I was going to say, you, you <laughs> yeah. sealed your own fate Bold. now. <laughs> the level of confidence in my voice is not matched with my actual ability at all. So, first things first. Of course. How far into the ground do I want this? Reasonably far. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, I want to try and get the flowers blending so I don't just have things levitating in the air like I, you know, do sometimes. I feel like that's your personal brand. It adds to the like fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> fantasy <laughs> fairy tale, everything levitates. Yeah, that's an issue. Let's adjust that since the, the bamboo just went into the hedge. Which it isn't normally how bamboo works. You did say you wanted it to blend. Yeah. <laughs> Top tier blending capabilities. I'm just so fussy with placement and then I'll get really into placing in one angle and then forget to check the others. I'm the same. I literally place something then realise that it's wrong on one specific side and then have to go back and then just keep doing that over and over. And then before I know it, it's been an hour and all I've done is place some scenery. If it chips in a little bit here, I don't mind. But there's like one stalk, that's fine. I'm not going to be that fussy. But now it's squirrel time. Oh, oh dear. I feel, I feel like, like the community is just going to start including hidden squirrels in all of their builds. Do you know how happy I'd be if every week when I go on and check the workshop, I start finding hidden squirrels in screenshots? <laughs> <laughs> how excited I would be. <laughs> My influence reigns supreme. Well, there you go, chat. That's the way to L top. <laughs> these are this. This feels like the welcome committee. They're here to make sure that you have a nice time in the zoo. Is the escaped panda not part of the welcome committee? <laughs> it was an unintentional addition. No, you meant to do. Just say that you meant to do everything. I can't mean to make a panda escape. <laughs> sure you can you call it an experience and then <laughs> there they have a new home and here I am ready to welcome everyone into the zoo and or watch them as they run away in fear from the red panda <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. just as everybody's running away this is all they see <laughs> this haunts them as they flee. <laughs> oh dear. I love it dearly. And see, because it's because it's badger themed, I really want to put it by the badger exhibit, but then it feels like it might be too many. In it's too, too many for right now, but if you think about it in terms of the fact that you're gonna build so much more, it's not mm. that bad. True. I think just if it fits here, I will place it here. I think you can make it fit. Potentially. How much is this going to levitate? Oof. No, you might just... The bamboos might need deleted, but we could probably... If I delete some bamboo, can I get away with it? I think so. Well, let's not make sure the bamboo isn't in the beaver exhibit. That would be a... Will I learn my lesson with this bamboo? Probably not. Okay. 
So it needs to be about this far forward. And then Actually, I could just delete all the bamboo and then have this fit. That's maybe a better idea. Yeah, that might be the best way to incorporate it. Okay. There we go. Perfect. And how does this look? Yeah, it looks good. There we go. There to welcome you to view Eltan and the Badger, who is here and had a kid. I had a baby badger. When did that happen? During one of the streams, I just saw Eltan as having a baby at the side, and I was like, I wasn't aware I was, but, you know. <laughs> well, now you know. Now I know. I am seven and a half years old, and I have a badger child. Where is your badger child? I don't know. I don't know which one I had. Let me... Let me see children. I have two. You have two children and you didn't even tell me? I I didn't know. It's, it's nice to find out when you have kids that you're unaware of. Thank you, Planet Zoo, for educating me. But to be fair, uh, Rowan's actually a very nice name. So I approve of this. <laughs> They're both good names, actually. Yeah, Karen's not a bad name. So where are my children? Here is one of my children. And... Ooh, I'm having some feedback. You might want to double check your microphone quickly and just make sure nothing is rubbing it. There we go, is that better? I think so, yes. Thank Good. you. And then here is my other child, lost in some grass. Just frolicking in the grass. Having a nice time. Wait, isn't one of your children the one that was coming out of their little burrow earlier? I think so. I think that might have been uh Chiron. Look at my children, so well behaved, making sure to help he me was, out. Yeah, I think he was helping you out. I'm so proud. Who, where am I? Does it tell me who I had the children with? Let me go on to the child and then I can... Also, Ky I'm con there's two Chirons. I don't know if there's necessarily two. No, it, it went to a different Chiron when I clicked on it. Oh, so I thought you clicked on Ro Rowan. Did I? I'm gonna double I check so. now. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know whether how how this worked. That's Chiron. Oh, so there are two Chirons. There are two okay. Chirons. I'm not that's crazy. Slightly less, that's slightly less concerning then. I just named my son after its father. It's fine. Okay, that's nice. That was a nice thing for you to do. <laughs> good family tradition. We <laughs> like good strong names in this family. Although I kind of wish you'd just named them after yourself. <laughs> well, just name all of them Eltanen. Yeah. It's very tempting to go and change every badger to Eltanen. <laughs> I think it's important that you do. I think one day you should just log in just before a stream. Do it. Well, Sean's a bad name. Sh Sean can be Eltanen. Yeah. Just like no well, just one second. We're going to give them all different variations of my name. Save. There we go. Okay. Because I have infinite nicknames. So, Chiron, can, my children can keep their names. We're going to be biased. <laughs> oh, wait, there's two Rowans. Oh, no, which one's my child? <laughs> we need the one that's not my child. Have you just been naming all of them after their parent? <laughs> <laughs> this one's not my kid. This one's not my kid. This, this one can be renamed. Uh, this one can be Elton. Do we have any more badgers in here? This is Chiron, Rowan. Elt's already been renamed. The Chirons can stay, but we have three me. And if they have any more kids, I will make sure to come and adapt them to <laughs> all be, <laughs> yes, to all be Elt variations. I um, mean, Orange Spark in chat has a great suggestion of Eltaninja. You know, I respect it. I respect it. Uh, one of the Chirons can get a better name. Are you the child? <laughs> Are you my child? Who knows? Yeah, you deserve better than being named after your father. You can be... You can be Elton Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. 
That's a great nickname. <laughs> oh no, is this going to be my new nickname? <laughs> yes. If you don't change your username on Twitter, or like your <laughs> name on Twitter to that, I would be <laughs> very disappointed. So, uh, I always have themed names. So at Christmas, I'm Elf Tannen. At uh, Halloween, I'm Bat Out of Helt. And now I'm, <laughs> now I'm just going to be El <laughs> Elton Ninja. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think we need to get you some like nunchucks or something for your profile picture. I mean, I would that's... just like to learn to use nunchucks, honestly. That'd be sick. I will teach you. Shuffle Do you know how to use nunchucks? Yes. <laughs> you say that like it's a normal hobby. <laughs> no, in my head it's obvious because I did Taekwondo for a couple of years and that was just like... That makes it more that. normal. <laughs> I with... realised that without that context, it sounds a little bit strange. <laughs> I was just picturing you, like, on a Friday night, pulling out some nunchucks and practising with the three cats as an audience. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Do you know what I do? I play Planet Zoo with one hand and just use my nunchucks with the other and then switch. <laughs> I want to watch you stream just sitting here controlling it the other hand. You're just doing nunchuck tricks. That's, that's going to be... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Better yet, we'll just stream together. You'll do the, like, actual building, the habitats, all of that stuff. And I'll just sit here with my nunchucks. <laughs> oh, stream plan. Perfect. <laughs> Look out for it here. This is frontier-only content, folks. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. So, while we're uh, discovering your many hidden talents, I'm going to work on getting, <laughs> getting this placed. Oh, this has made my day. <laughs> I just forget that people don't know everything about me inherently <laughs> off the bat. So when I say things, I don't realise how they sound. Oh, oh dear. So thank you for this gift. Oh no. Well, I, will, I don't even think I, I might have nunchucks at home. If I have them, I will bring them in for you. Thank so you. Can you. Take a, you can take a Twitter picture of your new name. Perfect. The plan is in motion. <laughs> um, I, I'm seeing various things in the chat. Heather's saying, are you holding out on us? Osric's just laughing. Oh dear. I'm sure at some point we can convince Elle that I need to have nunchucks on the stream. I'm sure. I mean, I don't need much convincing. <laughs> yeah, you're into it already. I enjoy chaos. <laughs> I thrive on chaos. I'm seeing people saying they thought everyone just knew how to use nunchucks. And it's not that I don't. It's that I don't know how to, like, in theory, and based off of it, yes, but skillfully, no. Like, I could yeah. just whip out nunchucks and pull off some sick tricks. You never know. It could be your talent. You just don't know. Potentially. Ooh. Maybe you've got a natural flair for nunchucks. <laughs> well, I am Elta Ninja, after all. I mean, what's in the name, you know? <laughs> oh. So, I am removing grass so it's not just growing through concrete. Because I figure that probably makes sense. Maybe I wanted it to do that. <laughs> look, we're trying to make it look like this zoo has actual upkeep. <laughs> I mean, you've got red pandas running around, you've got <laughs> hidden squirrel army. <laughs> exactly, we need to give up some modicum of professionalism. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Path going there. I'm probably going to need to add path in here, but it's fine. I just want the aesthetic for now. And then I need to add on our sh shop area. Where? Which side do you think the shop? Obviously not this side because there's a path. But are you thinking our shop area should go here and separate it out or up here? Because obviously we still have one more exhibit to build. We're going to build a fallow deer exhibit somewhere. Mm. I suppose if you do it on the like upper side, then you've got more space to, like, not more space. You've got like a nice transition for the next exhibit. But it depends 
Mm. Oh, I don't know, you know. If we put it here, then we could have the fallow deer here leading straight on from the mischievous pandas. Yes. And then this path here, because of this, air, this area being sectioned off already, could then transition into our new area? Yes, I think that sounds about right. Cool. And then obviously coming up this back area, we can continue on to a different section. Yeah, and then at least if the red pandas escape again, they can go and visit the fallow deer. Perfect. <laughs> if the red pandas escape again, they could just mosey on over here and chill <laughs> in the plaza with some guests. Just to make the experience truly complete. They can just sit down with the guests. It'll be a nice chill time. No one will be running away. No one. Absolutely no one. I enjoy their show me, hide me guide so I can make sure I'm doing this right. Honestly, that is the kind of thing that I live for in Planet Zoo because I need assistance with knowing where to place my... Knowing how far to like levitate my builds. And we all know you need the help, so. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I so lovely know. to be supported by your team. Hey, it said with so much love, but I did very much enjoy the fact that the first stream I was on with you, at least four members of staff lost their jobs because <laughs> you just kept placing stuff in the air. Look. It's a learning experience for everyone. That includes me. That includes the staff that lost their job. <laughs> they, were, they were work experience placements. It's fine. Oh, that's okay then. I'm just putting path through here for now so as guests can get to the amenities. And at some point I will come in here and I will actually fix this properly. The amount that I just chaotically fix off stream. I see no issue. That's gonna go, no. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's how you make it work. You just yell at it. <laughs> you, you joke, but that's kind of how I work. Why am I not doing what I usually do and just have it aligned to grid? Because, kids, I'm a genius. I thought you were just playing it risky. Risky stream. Let's go with that logic. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep finding excuses for you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry. That's true friendship. After insulting me, you show that it's all just an elaborate ruse. This is not straight enough. Hey, the best friendships are made 50% insults and 50% mindless support, and that is the hill I will die on. You know, I can't even argue. If you can't tear into your friends, then what are you doing, honestly? You can't tear into your friends. Who can you tear into? Exactly. <laughs> Just widen this area. No, don't round the way. <sighs> This isn't centered. It's annoying me. And I hit a button and I changed the size. This is going so well for me. I can't I'm remember. not even sure which one you hit. I don't know what I hit either. And now I'm confused. Community, help me. <laughs> I broke the paths again. I did this in the first stream and then fixed it afterwards. Um, but they're saying shift keep. I'm like, ha 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 ha. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. What's bothering me is these poles and getting them straight. But. I wish I wasn't such a stickler for things being slightly perfectionist, but... No, I'm exactly the same. Like, if something's just slightly off-centre, it really, really gets to me. <laughs> See, I don't mind this being, like, slightly natural-looking, but I want it to be mostly yeah. straight, especially up this area. But this works, and it's fairly symmetrical with where the poles are placed. Yeah, so, you've done a nice job. Thank you. I fixed it after messing up with the shift key. 
You meant to do that. It happens to the best of us. It does. Especially when it comes to paving. But nonetheless, now we have this little feature for guests. And it matches everything. These two go really nicely together. It's such a nice little area and I'm loving how the theming is really coming through in everything now. Right. Everything looks quite cohesive. It really does. Even the greenery that people have picked matches quite well. I'm quite enjoying this harmony between what we put in the badger exhibit and trees here. Yeah. Some good colour symmetry. Ooh, colour symmetry. The, the art degree coming in strong. <laughs> I wish I could use my psychology degree for good use, but no. <laughs> I said I was going to give it a friend. I'm just making sure that I stay true to my word. I wouldn't want to be seen as a liar. No, not when it comes to squirrels. Absolutely not. It's an important feature. Your squirrel army is an important feature and I will support you in it because I am greatly scared of what they will do to me if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they are always watching. I mean, always they're everywhere. Always watching. <laughs> they are literally everywhere, so they really are. I really enjoy that this leaf looks like an eye. I know, I was just thinking that. I was like, wow, they really are always watching. But there we go. Now we have this and we can get this area marked out for a fallow deer exhibit. So I'm going to bring the path up here and then mark off this section. And you know who the fallow deer is great friends with? Oh. Eurasian lynx. True. True. We could have Lumi in this area. We could. Just saying. Just putting it out there. It's not a bad idea. Just manifesting it. Well, you know what you have to do. You sealed your own fate. I know, I know. Regretting my words greatly. <gasps> oh dear. That's not in a position I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just being picky about making sure this curves around the plant are correct. <laughs> there we go. I don't want it to, get to cut through the planter too much. No, that's fair. Oh, and I love then... this little area so much. Thank you. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming together. I'm not going to lie. I need to extend this further down before I do what I want. Do, 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 do. Right. Excuse me. Just extending all of these paths in and sectioning all together. It's so pretty. Thank you. Creating a little diagonal area to connect all. Nicely done. Thank you. We're learning. We're this learning and growing. A sandbox experience for everyone. <laughs> And now uh, we have this area ready to expand into some new builds. And we have over here ready for some fallow deer. Yay. Perfect. So I'm figuring we're probably going to continue with the same fencing because it makes sense if we've got an area that's themed, try and keep everything cohesive. Yeah, for sure but we can try and maybe get the area marked out. Okay, let's uh, do it. So of course we need to go to our Zoopedia 
and search for the fallow deer and then check what it is that they want what it is that they like um so hmm how many how many adults are we going to want let me see their species data it's group size three to 16 so maybe four yeah four seems like a good number so we need about 500 square meter and at least a uh, grade two so my way of gauging size is to compare to ones i've built previously because i have no concept of scale Same. in real life too like yeah people will ask to meet me somewhere and they'll be like oh it's, it's like six miles away and i'm like i nope nope no concept i need that in like distance walked or yeah. something <laughs> otherwise it's not happening I need it in the amount of time it will take me to walk there and that is the only way I can comprehend it <laughs> yep so this one is about 436 meters squared so we want it to be just a bit bigger than this which means if we make it the same length but just a bit wider we're Perfect. probably set which makes this nice and easy that sounds like famous last words look don't jinx me being optimistic so these are at two meters and i know already that these are a uh, fine resistance grade so we are set for that so if we start these at about the same positioning is this going to be set enough and then Try and align this to the path because it's not exactly actually straight on the world level. Oh, it's okay. a nice job aligning it though. Thank you, thank you. I need a much shorter length so as I can just make sure it's just a bit wider than what we've currently got. I will adjust the poles for how it adjusts afterwards. And then, whoop. And I will go from the other side so as we can adjust the length correctly. Perfect. Just maybe one shorter. Perfect. Nice. See, you say you don't understand length, but you pretty much nailed that. I can do it once I have a scale to go off of. Okay. But from eyeballing, like, <laughs> the first time I came in here to practice making an exhibit, um, it was for the Badgers, and I got an idea of the fact I needed it to be roughly this scale. It was about four times the size, because I just zoomed out and went, whoop, and then, uh, I swear to God, it was like a, it was like having a badger arena rather than a badger <laughs> habitat. No, yeah, when I first started playing campaign mode on Planet Zoo, I remember, like, building these massive habitats and then placing my animals and being like I can't even see the animals because my my enclosure is so big yeah it's definitely a learning curve how have I managed to I've, I've managed to forget how to adjust poles I swear to god every time nope nope the one th I, I learn one skill and I remember how to do something and then my brain forgets the next one. Ha ha! Oh, it's because it's too long. That's why. Uh, then I need it to be symmetrical. If it's going to be too long. Ooh, ooh, actually, I could make a little section at this side and have the habitat door there. Oh, and that's that a nice way to do it, yeah. And that would solve our problem. So zoom up so as we can keep this area mostly straight. There we go. Perfect. We're still going to have the issue up here, it. but I don't mind as much when it's at the back if I have to make it mostly centered. 
put a side on. Yeah. Slightly off. We're going for perfectionism again, folks. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to do... You know, I might leave... I'm not going to leave these two. It's going to drive me insane. I'm going to match it to the ones on here. <laughs> I was going to leave it because they were symmetrical on either side because I'd done the same length for the walls. But it needs to be aligned with this one or it's going to drive me crazy. Is that aligned enough? Yeah, that's aligned enough. Perfect. That looks good. And we've got a space marked out for a fallow deer. Oh, I'm so excited. I love the fallow deer. They're very, very cute. We can definitely get started for it this week. Take a look, get some of them ordered. So if I head to the market, who have we got? Ooh, Oscar. Good name. That is a strong name. That's a strong name. And we need three more. Uh, three more? Uh, actually, yeah, we decided on four, didn't we? For some reason, my brain yep. was saying three. Then I guess we're just getting all of them. Good, because Sophia's my middle name, and I wanted that one. <laughs> Perfect. We've got one named after you as well. Yay, finally. I've been getting very jealous of all the El Tanin, El, El Ninja. El well, now Ninja. you've got your very own feature. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just means we're going to have to have you back. So as you can see. Oh no, do I have to come back? That doesn't oh, sound like no. fun. You know how much I dislike doing these streams. You definitely dislike hanging out with me. Can't Getting bear it. Time. <laughs> Elle and I actually don't speak outside of these streams. We just. Yeah, we just sit in silence. Yeah. Our desks are right next to each other. We've never interacted. <laughs> Sometimes I forget your name. I've actually got a post-it note with it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really wish I still had the post-it note that just said FRAN in all caps <laughs> attached to this monitor. Because at one point, due to the setup we had, I had a, um, a post-it to remind me to switch to FRAN scenes. And it was just pasted over it. That would have been perfect for right now. But I removed it like three weeks ago. I'm sad now. That's exactly what I was thinking of when I put it. My infinite post-its. Yeah. I'm like surrounded by them because it's how I plan everything for streaming. So there's just a pile of post-it here that I just leave week for week. Honestly, I literally organise my entire life with post-it notes. So I think it's fine. It's fine. Is, is there any other way you're meant to do it? I thought that was... I hear rumours that some people don't need constant reminders of everything they have to do, but to be honest, I'm not sure I believe them. That couldn't be me. No, <laughs> can't relate, sorry. Not me, Soz. <laughs> couldn't be me. Right, if we take a look, uh, I'm just interested to see some of the Zupedia information on our fallow deer, get an idea of who we're bringing in. So... We're, I, I always <laughs> love when it's just got age of sexual sterility death. <laughs> <laughs> this always just makes me laugh. Just death. Just death. Just go until they die. I appreciate I appreciate the From hustle. From four years to death. The hustle. <laughs> How else am I meant to phrase it? I mean, I've never heard a phrase like that before. <laughs> <laughs> While we wait on our zookeepers bringing over our fallow deers i'm going to just add some more lights some more other features and just make sure that this place is ready if we get another donation box Can't have too many donation boxes. Cannot. This one's framing either side of this exhibit. Maybe I'll put this at the other side so it's not overwhelming. Yeah, that might be a good shout. Tuck it in beside the lamppost. That feels kind of natural. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Nightman Productions says, uh, post-it notes are the way of the past. Tattooing reminders onto yourself is the way of the future. <laughs> My body would be covered in tattoos in literally about a week. I was going to say, considering both of our memories, 
that might become a problem. But at the same point, I did get bought a tattoo pen, like a fake tattoo pen that lasts like six weeks for Christmas, and now I'm really tempted to just start keeping notes the whole way down. I'm just going to write your name on for the next stream. <laughs> you come in and you've just got El Tannin tattooed on yes. your wrist. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. We're wanting to duplicate, not move. And just get a couple little benches here. That's going to annoy me, actually, if it's not somewhat symmetrical. I, like I, knew, to... I knew that was going to annoy you before you said it was going to annoy you. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. It needs to be aesthetically pleasing. I know. I'm with you. <laughs> right. We have two of them. I really need to hire some more staff, don't I? Might be something you want to think about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's... Who have we got? What do we need more of? We've got so many vendors, because I keep... <laughs> I keep placing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and then deleting stuff. How many, how many shops have you actually got? Like, how many, how many buildings require? Um, I don't know, like, four or five? It's fine, I just keep placing stuff. Um, hey, at least you're not overworking them. No, however, I can check which ones. Oh no, okay, their wages are all the same, we're fine. I was gonna say, which ones need their wages raised? <laughs> but we're just gonna hire a bunch more of various stuff that we need. Um, so let's order more keepers, because right now we have one keeper, and that <laughs> seems not ideal. We've got like 20 vendors and one keeper. <laughs> Uh, I've got several education points, so probably do with a couple more educators. Add some extras in, so as once I then make more education spots, I don't forget. We're preemptively overhiring. We're in sandbox. Oh, is that what you're calling it? Okay. What happened to you're gonna help me make excuses? I told you it's about balance. <laughs> Fran giveth and Fran taketh away. Yeah, sometimes I give you unconditional support and rationalise every choice that you make, good or bad, and sometimes I tell you that I forget your name in between streams. That's okay, you've got to keep me on my toes. Yeah. <laughs> I like to mix it up, keep me keen. Couldn't have me getting too comfortable, else how else, was I, how else would I grow? Exactly, can't be getting complacent in our friendship. <laughs> Can't be too comfortable with your friends. No, 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 no. If you're not constantly terrified that your friends hate you, then how will you ever value them? But also, you don't have friendship unless you can mock each other while also knowing it's love. Yeah, exactly. Duality. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm hoping the extra, extra caretakers and the new addition of bins, since we added some more bins in a previous stream, will help with. We had a litter issue at one point. Look, they're going. Ooh. So what have we got? We've got some gulpy. We love our little gulpy man. I love gulpy. And we've got chief beef. Look at him. Oh, I love the happiest love little bit. mustache man. If you could eat or drink one thing from Planet Zoo, what would you? What would it be? Oh, oh no. Okay, give me... Right, we're going to the shops. People are also saying remember to assign work zones. I will do that off stream. Do not worry. Um, right. What are we thinking for... Oh, for food and drink? Mm. See, there's several things. So I have, a, I have a fondness for Chief Beef because of his wonderful mascot, mm. of course. But I'm not that big of a burger person. So it feels okay. like it wouldn't be there. Bernie's Bakes is a maybe, our new Ooh. feature. I am, I am a fond of Bernie's Bakes. I do love a cupcake, even if the way I eat cupcakes is apparently controversial. How do you eat cupcakes? <sighs> oh no. I, I, I don't think it's weird, but people say it's weird. So the way I eat cupcakes is because if you if if you try and eat a cupcake and it's one that's got like a good swirl of frosting, like the ones here on the top of our beloved Bernie's Bakes, 
then if you bite into it, you just get like a head full of frosting and it's like up your nose and that's not great. So providing obviously that it's a cupcake without filling, because if it's a cupcake with filling, you can't do this. But I rip the bottom off and then put it on the top and then squish it and make it like a sandwich. Okay, now I can see the merit to that. Yeah, thank you. I just thought it was like a really functional, beneficial way to be able to eat this without it being messy. But yeah, I do it sometimes and people look at me like I have just committed the worst food crime in the planet. Those are fake friends. <laughs> Real friends support chaotic cupcake eating. Honestly, now I'm quite, I'm considering the way I eat cupcakes and whether that's weird. How do you eat cupcakes? I... <laughs> Oh no, I'm really exposing <laughs> You were going to judge me. How do you eat cupcakes? I take the... I separate the cake from the frosting, eat the cake, and then eat the frosting afterwards. So it's like a dessert for my dessert. <laughs> like, with a spoon? <laughs> Normally with my finger, <laughs> some kind of gargoyle. <laughs> I'm just imagining you in the cafeteria, just sitting there with a cupcake, and just a handful of frosting. Honestly, we had cupcakes um, a few months ago in the office. Someone had brought cupcakes in. And I was just sitting there, like very, like sneakily eating my frosting with my finger. You're never allowed to judge me ever again. <laughs> like a little cupcake gremlin. <laughs> Oh, I have the biggest need to buy and bring in cupcakes now just to watch you awkwardly <laughs> try and do this now that I know. <laughs> I can't be the only one that I want buy. That but... just seems like too much frosting. If you're just eating it like it's a Mr. Whippy ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but it means that you prolong it because I I'm not like a massive sweet tooth person so you're like... not a massive sweet tooth so instead you prolong the dessert and eat oh, yeah. raw frosting I... <laughs> I the frosting on the discarded cupcake wrapper i can literally <laughs> make it last hours it's just sugar it's just so much sugar look okay i don't sleep well sugar is all i have I would like you to know that Jay Rasik is requesting that we go live when we give you cupcakes to witness this. This is <laughs> this is your legacy now. Right. This is what I wanted to be known for in my life. <laughs> at least it makes me feel better that Nightman has just said when they eat cupcakes, they eat the whole cupcake at once and people think that's weird. And I just think that's impressive. The, like the whole... Like the whole thing. Because <laughs> I don't think I could physically do that. In but that's impressive. Head, they unlock their jaw like a snake. <laughs> and they just go, oh. Yeah. Some people can chug drinks. <laughs> Nightman can chug cupcakes. And here at Frontier, we respect it. Look, all I'm saying is everyone has a different way of eating cupcakes and they are all beautiful in their own way. <laughs> True friendship no, is the way we eat it. cupcakes along the way. I Myself. I would like you to know that people are now just saying nunchucks and cupcakes. This is the legacy you've left behind. Great. That's. That, I mean, to be fair, I don't know if there's a better way to sum me up as a person. <laughs> but back to the question you asked. Oh, yeah. Despite the fact it's boring, I do actually think it would be Street Fox coffee. One, just because I, I do love a good coffee okay. and I like to think that the Planet Zoo coffee would be good. But also too, because I feel like this is me. Like, hold on. I am the fox. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I just got some ears, like me and Street Fox have the similar vibe going on. We've both got the hair. We both have very similar glasses. I can and see this. So. I have a very big soft spot for Street Fox Coffee. I think it's got a good vibe going on. It's also so close to being, I'm 95. But Ooh. it's estimated 94. So they took a guess and got it just <laughs> off. Wow, I feel old. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Look, we've established I'm the baby of the team. And now we have one more random staff member, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> we just keep accumulating them. It's fine. Right, so I've got to get you boxes so that we can do nunchucks, cupcakes, and you basically cosplaying as Foxy. Oh my god, one week I should come in as Street Fox. Yeah. Halloween idea. Come as your favourite Planet Zoo shop mascot. Hey, I would be down for that. I would. I mean, somebody would just get the Gulpy Rex costume and they have the easiest job. But I would 1000% do a Street Fox Fox cosplay. I'm trying to think what I would be. We can take a look at the various counters. I will new over and we can try and figure out who would be most suitable. And that way we can also give people a look at the different shops in case they are not familiar with Planet Zoo. Oh, uh, I like this. Maybe we should use the counters because that might be easier because they're a bit yeah. smaller. Uh, whoops. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> We're just going to watch me spawn infinite staff. <laughs> at I this just point, see how many you have at the end. <laughs> at this point, I'm reluctant to stop. Like, I know I could fix it, but why would I? When I could just stress people out with how many vendors I end up with. Uh, I think that's everyone from here. And then we need our food stalls as well. Mm, put a couple back. If I get these all placed. Uh, there's a couple that don't have counters yet. So those ones I will stick down. Um, if I can remember which one's which. So I don't think we have one for Cosmic Cow Ice Cream. No, I don't think so. And then... Does Hot Dog Squad have one? Yes, but Mexilente doesn't. Let's see, good. Monsieur Frites. Pizza Pen. Okay. I think that's the ball. I might have maybe missed one, but I think that's the ball. And then I will hit play so as they open. Perfect. These guys are all just in a squat, <laughs> raring to go. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I love all of them at once. It's like a tiny little pig jump. <laughs> it looks like they're about to just pop into a like absolute bag in line dance. <laughs> It's like a flash mob. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of loving it. I just leave them at this one person. Maybe I just need to cosplay as a vendor. <laughs> you come on as miscellaneous vendor. Yeah, just squat the entire time. So, we have Bernie's Bakes. Not named after Bernie, but Bernie did make Bernie's Bakes. Just to be extra confusing. <laughs> But um, Bernie's Bakes doesn't really have a logo. It's just like the cupcake. Mm. So, I mean, you probably can't just come as the cupcake. I could. You could. You could do a cupcake I could, come as, I could come as a half-eaten cupcake that I've eaten and just come as frosting. We could come as a set. I could come as the cake. And you could come as frosting. See? Perfect. <laughs> we have a plan. Oh, no. So, for Chief Beef... We've obviously got our little our little mascot man. I love Chief Beef. I, I like his little mascot. Look how happy he looks. Like that's a welcoming friend. It I does, also It does concern me slightly that he has a spatula as if to fry himself. That's fine. <laughs> I enjoy that it's got the little like crest in mm. the spatula. But yeah, now that you're saying it, that is <laughs> slightly ominous. That's hmm. fine. It just means he's recognising how delicious he is. We're just going to take a deep dive into the chief beef lore, figure out what's <laughs> going on with the spatula. Hey, I told you I'd find a way to use my psychology. <laughs> <laughs> Fran does a Twitter breakdown on the <laughs> lore behind chief beef. <laughs> um, here we've got Hot Dog Squawk with our hot dog friend. He's very cute. I feel like I could be the hot dog. It's, it's a, he's an adorable hot dog. I also love that because of the matching police badges, I imagine that the, him and Chief Beef are co-workers. Oh, I imagined that, like, the hot dog was Chief Beef's dog. Well, yeah, but police dogs are staff. They're not just dogs. Oh, true. Part of the team. Okay, so they're partners, I think. Yeah. 
Just the driving is... around on the, in the little meaty squad car. <laughs> the meaty squad. Oh, I do not like that description. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> it has to be meaty. Everything there is made of meat. <laughs> oh. oh, swiftly moving on. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you invited me into the street. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> For Cosmic Cow, there's not a huge amount that you would be able to costume as. You could cosplay as just the cow, but it is just a pink cow. Yeah, but the cow... Um, it doesn't the cow do like a space hopper thing? I feel like that would be fun. That could be cute. But at the same point, um, we do have people like one of our tool staff, Laura Nora in the office, is just known for pink. So maybe Laura Nora could come. We can, we can wrap them into it. Okay, so what we're saying is we need one person to be every single mascot. We're gonna carry, we're gonna try and like pull everybody together and do a costume party of just all of the different brands. This is so not gonna happen, but I would love to make it happen. I would no, love I, if we could I'm, get people on board. I think we could I think we could do it. I we have until Halloween. I think if we are annoying enough about it, they'll do it just to shut us up. I love the idea that it means that someone just has to come as a taco. <laughs> That's definitely the short straw in this one. Oh, Joel has just said Chief Beef was cosplayed by their friend Chris at official Planet Coaster events. Aww. That's really cool. That's really cool. I love that. So here we have this little friend. Okay, I feel like that's me. You could probably pull this off. That would be very cute. With a little apron. I like to cook, so. This is Missy Goods the donut store and this would fit very well i would be impressed to see you try and make your pigtails stand up like that though hey i have pipe cleaners you can do a lot with pipe cleaners i would know the cosplay coming in strong see i feel like you could help me oh, together we could make my pigtails defy gravity we could do the common cosplay trick where you use a pool noodle as a base and I then you like wrap hair around it thing. Yeah, that's how uh, doing like fancy cosplay wigs with like big chunky braids. You just do all the bottom of it with foam and with like pool noodles and then wrap hair around it. There's a, there's a hack for you. See? Perfect. I knew you wouldn't steer me wrong. <laughs> Random cosplay tips that I can help with. Um, how to cosplay Monsieur Frites? I do not know. <laughs> mm, I think maybe you just come as a giant cone. And not then... the not the chips. <laughs> Maybe you just like just make your face cold. yellow. <laughs> oh god, you look like a Simpson. <laughs> I don't see the issue. Like, I'm sure somebody could make it work. That's a challenging one for whoever thinks they're up to the task. For Pizza Pen, we have the same police logo, but this looks like a bandit. I feel like Pizza Pen is who Chief Beef and Hot Dog Squad are trying to find. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't know why the badge is still in the logo, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. But yeah, I, I feel like this is part of the Chief Beef lore, is that oh, Pizza yeah. Pen is definitely the one trying to don't escape. Don't worry, I'll, I'll have my psychological breakdowns live soon. Perfect. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you informed. But he does look like a very happy little burglar. Look at him go. Yeah, I kind of can't be mad if he's a burglar. Yeah, I know. But also, what is he stealing? Because really, you're already pizza. What else could you need in your life? He's stealing our hearts. Aww. His cheesy, cheesy goodness. Aww, I love him now. <laughs> I love my little bandit heart stealer. <laughs> the pizza is now our favourite. So is the pizza winning for you then? Yeah, I think so. We have, I think I'm um, pizza. We have Hipster Fox, also known as me. You? This is just me. I, I don't have... know, I feel like we need to get you to dye your hair red one time. Oh, God. Just the temporary stuff. It would work. It'd be fine. It'll just... Is it all red? But I have I have the highlight. Is it going to... Are we, are we going to convince me to do the red and white thing? Yeah, I think so. Mm, I think it would Fox. be too much of a missed opportunity to not do that. But... Maybe for Street Fox. But we then have Pip Shot Smoothies, which is another one that doesn't really have a mascot, but it does have a very cute aesthetic, and I feel like somebody could do some fun, colourful, fruit-themed stuff yeah, with this. Yeah, I think so. 
don't know, come as like a little orange or something. Look at the boss squad. Sorry, every now and then I remember that they're all doing this. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Then we have Cosmic Cow when you can see them a bit more. They're also in the squat. <laughs> Look at them go. The more I see it, the more I think I should just be the cow. <laughs> Maybe it's fate. And then we have our good old friend, Gulpy. We love Gulpy Rex. Love Gulpy. I have a big soft spot for Gulpy. I don't know if it's just because he's so iconic, but he just... I do love him. I feel like you can't look at Gulpy and be sad. Right. And that's all I asked for from my food and beverage mascots. Now we can enjoy just all of these vendors. Oh no. <laughs> my vendor army. I feel like this is just going to be a recurring thing. If I, I redo that, stopped. then... Why did they oh no, it doesn't make them it? squat again. That's so sad. I was hoping that if I redid it, it put them all back into a squat. <laughs> Why would they stop? I don't understand. <laughs> because... <laughs> this is my vendor army. I feel like it's literally just going to be a recurring thing. That vendor, you have to fire. I'm just going to fire them all. You will have a vendor for every squirrel. I'm now I'm firing them all. Oh no! <laughs> it's the way their their little smiley face automatically goes red when you fire them. <laughs> well, I mean it would, but we're just having a mass firing at Planet oh. Zoo. It's fine, they were just here for a day of it as a demonstration for vendor marketing. I don't think they knew that. <laughs> it's been oh. a hard day for vendors everywhere. Oh, no. I know they were going to disappear anyway, but it's funny to watch them just sidestep and In disappear. <laughs> just it's like the world's worst flash mob. <laughs> <laughs> they just got into a squat and got cut off before they even started line dancing. I was like, no, we're not having a flash mob here, you're all gone. They were hyped and ready to go and then bam, shut them down. Maybe they should learn that there's a time and a place for line dancing. <laughs> hey, if you can't line dance at Planet Zoo, then what is the point? That's actually true. Um, I own two pairs of cowboy boots, so who am I to say that people can't line dance? And we all know I'm a big country fan, so... I did not know that, but this is great knowledge for me. I love how I just say things now and assume that they are well-known, established facts. I'm not complaining, considering I am also a big country fan, hence the aforementioned, I don't like where these are placed, uh, two pairs of country boots, so... I mean, I'm jealous. I've never owned a pair of country boots, so I feel like you're going to have to help me locate my first pair. I can, I can certainly try. I have one pair that are a pair of like vintage, proper, brown, traditional cowboy boots. Mm. And then I have one pair that are black with iridescent aliens on them that are reflective. So when you're in like traffic or in various things, they light up like bike reflective. I need to see them I, immediately. That I can definitely achieve. I am a big fan. And hey, if they go missing next time I come to visit, if we are, think. if we're the same shoe size, you're always welcome to borrow. I, I'm gonna doubt that we're the same shoe size. Yeah, I'm very small. You're very so. small. What shoe size are you? Uh, like a four and a half. Oh no, we're about the same. Okay, cool. The height was deceptive, but we're good. <laughs> This is where everybody that no, has only seen photos of me in our community or seen me on streams. Um, quite often people think I'm tall. They will never see me online and then they meet me in person and I'm this tiny little gremlin that's like, hello. You're like a little pocket rocket. I am. Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly tall, so I was definitely surprised that you were shorter than me. Yeah, I'm the youngest on the team and I'm the shortest on the team. And it's not as bad when I'm beside you, but when I'm beside Tim and Jens and they're <laughs> yeah. both six foot and I'm beside them going up to like here on them. <laughs> like if I'm beside them to make eye contact, I have to actively do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are surrounded by giants. We are. For context for people in the chat who are discussing this, um, this is a size four and a half in UK sizing. So if you're not UK sizing, it might be a bit different, which will make it sound like I have the tiniest feet on the planet. I promise I'm not that small. Yeah, I forget what, I think I've 
five is a thirty-eight in European sizing, but I can't remember what it is in the US. So yeah, I think that's right. I think a five is a thirty-eight. Or I just pulled that number out of thin air, and you're going along with it. Either way, I'm happy. Uh, no, it's because I actually think I remembered that four is a thirty-seven. Okay, that seems about right then. So. And now I'm just chaotically adding in more squirrels as a Every final Every time I refocus on the screen, like when we've had a little chat, I just look back up and there's squirrels. There's squirrels everywhere. They are the reason people come. <laughs> for sure. That is for sure the reason that people come to the Planet Zoo streams is for the squirrels. It's why guests come to Planet Zoo. In the Planet Zoo world, that's our main marketing strategy. Come see the animals? No, come see all of the topiary squirrels. <laughs> come see the topiary squirrel army. I would go and visit the topiary squirrel army. I would go and visit too. I need to make sure that they're everywhere possible. I think you might be achieving that. I just like caught a glimpse of the rest of the like area. <laughs> it was like it was like six. Yeah. Good. They're here to make sure that you have a squirrely good time. I love them. I love them. I don't know why I have such a fondness for the squirrel topiary, but I really do. I think it's just part of your brand now. It's just become part of the experience. Speaking of, I'm going to quickly check on our red pandas. Where are Did they? Did they escape again? Are we all good? We're going to hit play just to make sure that they are about. Oh yeah, I placed a squirrel here. Forgot for a minute. <laughs> there they are. Yay. Oh, look at them in the water. They're doing a little splash. Look at the cuties. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I had a camera malfunction. I zoomed in too far and it kind of broke a little bit, but we're fine. There's also a ball just levitating. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to vibe with it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I feel like levitation is part of the ongoing theme. It's because the pandas are magical. No. Yeah, they are. Listen to their little meeps. Sorry. <laughs> I got very excited. It's just you and me freaking out about the pandas now. That's it. <gasps> He's shaking the water off. Oh, they're so precious. I want one. Yen's made a very good decision by deciding on these. Oh yeah, for sure. They're they're so cute. They're so cute. Look at the little pandas. These are serotonin donuts. <laughs> New official name. <laughs> That's the only way I will refer to them from here on out. It's what they deserve to be known as. Because look at them! Tell me this doesn't just give you sheer serotonin. I genuinely don't think I've ever been this happy. <laughs> I want one! Can we get a, a red panda? <laughs> New office appeal. We try and convince yeah. them to let us just have a red panda. It wouldn't well, be fair like on the red two. panda. Maybe like two so they don't get lonely? <laughs> that's, that's the way we went over them over. <laughs> yeah. See if we can convert one of the meeting rooms into a red panda habitat. Yeah. We'll look after them, we'll stroke them, we'll tell them they're pretty. We would. Because look how pretty they are. They're so pretty. Good friends. And they haven't misbehaved. They haven't escaped again, which we're very grateful for. Yeah. See, they're good, really. And the zoo's popping off. Look at all these guests. Oh, look at that. There's a bit of a, a, a hemorrhage going on here, but it's fine. It's fine. It'll See, if up. you'd made that area an obstacle course, like I told you, it would have severely decreased the traffic flow. Instead, we would just have it here. <laughs> okay, well, that would be a different problem. <laughs> it's fine. It'll ease up as we start built fleshing out the zoo more, as yeah, it does. Sure. But it seems like some people are enjoying our badger friends. Oh, our fallow deers are about to mate, despite the fact that they have nothing yet. So it's glad to know that they're like getting a head start on enjoying their exhibit. I guess we're having five fallow deer instead. <laughs> Which ones are mating? 
Uh, Jody. And st uh, somebody. Where's Jody? Oh, they both have offspring, do you? They're already arguing because of incorrect ratio after oh, having no. a baby. One of these is going to get kicked before next stream, but it's fine. You cannot kick Sophia. Okay, I promise to keep Sophia. I'm probably going to kick one of the stags. Just okay, that I'll forgive you for. That feels like it's normally the problem. Yeah. But next time, we will come along to Planet Zoo. We will build in this fallow deer exhibit, get it all done, and then we'll be done with our fairy tale section. And we can move on to a new area of our zoo. Maybe see about getting somebody else's habitat in instead of just one that I've built. And maybe either have you or Jens make one or potentially a community one. That sounds like fun. I would, I would like to get a community build in here that's not just some decorative items, have a whole habitat area. That could be pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So I'm going to have to peruse the Steam Workshop, try and keep an eye out for some good Eurasian Lynx builds, either full yeah. habitats or features to go along with our Lumi exhibit. If everyone could just spam L with Eurasian Lynx builds, that would be great. I, I would greatly appreciate this, yes, please. I would like L to not know peace until <laughs> they have included a Eurasian Lynx habitat. I, I would not know peace anyway, because mm -hmm. I would feel like I have not done my duty. That's true. And I wouldn't let you have any peace, so, you know. You're going to remember that, but not remember my name. That's what we've learned today. Yep. <laughs> well, I will remember your name, because I'm going to write it on myself, you see? Oh, yeah, of course, you're getting it tattooed. Perfect. Yep, yep. But anyway, if I switch over, that is us for this week. Um, how have you had your time this week, Fran? All of the magical, wonderful, absolutely not ridiculous things that have happened. I very much enjoyed it. I enjoyed debating cupcakes. I enjoyed finding escape thread pandas. I enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed learning about your sick nunchuck skills. That's what Planet Zoo is all about. You come along, you learn some brilliant things about the community team here at Frontier. You learn that Fran has many hidden talents. Like cupcake eating. <laughs> yeah, you learn about in-depth cupcake eating skills. What more content could you want? Um, oh dear. But of course, I want to say a giant thank you to everyone that has joined us. Everybody's been so lovely and welcoming in the chat as you have been every time you've been tuning in. Thank you so much for continuing to make these Plan Elsu streams such a wonderful community experience. I cannot thank you enough. It has been making building this and learning the sandbox experience as we go the highlight of my week. And it's been really great getting a chance to have some of my team on to hang out with me. So thank you so much for being here, Fran. Thank you for having me. Of course. And I will definitely have you back. 1,000%. Better do. And I better see some Eurasian links. I'll, I'll make sure it's on the schedule. Okay, good. <laughs> and before we go, I just want to give a giant thank you to some of the people that are in our chat, to both of the Jules, who have been being very active, to Heather, of course, our wonderful moderator for moderating the stream. I've seen Osric in there as well, so a giant thank you to you. Um, and yeah, just thank you to everyone who has came and hung out with us and enjoyed some time. Uh, until next week, we will be back next Tuesday. I believe we will be here at a slightly later time. So keep an eye out on our socials and we will have more information about that then. And we will continue with cracking on with Plan Out Zoo and getting some fallow deers done next week. Until then, I will switch over to just me to say goodbye, farewell. See you again next time. Enjoy your day, folks. <laughs>